Justice Tech Pros podcast with Dominic Crea, one of the most unique podcasts on the internet, discussing the obstacles the defense team faces when trying a case, what goes on behind the scenes during pretrial and motion phase, holding defense attorneys accountable, making sure they're fighting for their clients, the difference between textbook law and how things truly play out in a courtroom, and everything in between. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Justice Tech Pros. Welcome back. I'm Matthew J. Mary, and this is a view from Mulberry Street. Is Donald Trump a mafia chieftain? Well, if you look at the way he's being targeted, you'd have to say that the very same tactics that are used by law enforcement against people that they say are part of organized crime, are now being used against a former president of the United States. Whether you like him or hate him, you've got to understand one thing. Targeting in the criminal justice system, the weaponizing of the criminal justice system is improper under any circumstances. And I've been saying for years that when you allow law enforcement to target the people that they say are part of organized crime, tomorrow they're going to do it to anyone. And eventually they could do it to you. And if they can do it to a former president of the United States who has millions of dollars to fight back, then you could rest assured that this country is in a lot of trouble. Today we're going to talk about some stuff that at first glance might seem political. But believe me, this is not about politics. This is about what Matthew J. Mary has been warning people of for four plus years decades. And finally, uh, it's becoming obvious that I've been right for over four decades. You know, most normal people, ordinary people, intelligent people, think that the way law enforcement works is that if a crime is committed, the crime is investigated. Evidence is gathered by the police or the FBI. And then the suspects of the crime are identified. And then the case goes to the prosecutor. And then the case goes to the grand jury. And then the case goes to the judge. And all the legal issues are pounded out. Is there anything wrong with this case? Should this case be thrown out before it goes to trial? And then it goes to trial, and it goes to the jury. Right? Wrong. That's not the way it happens in organized crime cases. In organized crime cases, remember remember the episode recently where I got caught in the, the FBI uh, album room, okay? You know, they have big charts for every family. The Bonanno family, Gambinos, the Columbos. Oh, all these big charts, right? And there are people's pictures on the charts. And who are those people? Those are the people that the agents are tasked with getting. Like, you have to get that guy. So they're not looking for crimes when it comes to organized crime. They're, they're, They're looking at people, okay? And these FBI agents are divided into squads. The, the top squads are for the five families. And then they break down the squads. You, you may be part of a, of a group and you may not be uh, suspected of being the boss, the underboss, the consulary. You may be none of that, all right? But you may still have three or four agents assigned to you to try to find a crime to match up with you. <laughs> not that they suspect you of a particular crime. They, their job is to find a crime, okay? Hard to believe. The purpose is to target these people and find a crime to match up with them and then maybe link them 
to someone who's committed a crime who is close to them. It happens every day. These are selective prosecutions. I have warned people for decades that the RICO laws and the conspiracy laws supposedly are made for organized crime only. You know, when they pass these draconian measures, they say, oh, we're only going to use it for organized crime. And the people say, oh, oh, yeah, right. You have to do that. I guess that's the only way you can get them. You know, so the people allow the law to occur, okay? And the problem is that I've been warning people, if you let them do this in organized crime cases, they will do it in other cases. And for decades now, for decades now, RICO laws have been used against big business, against banks, against accounting firms, against lawyers, and even against lawmakers and politicians. Some of the same politicians who helped to create the RICO law were eventually defendants in RICO cases. And I'll give you one example of a guy that I really loved and admired. He was a congressman. He ran for mayor. Uh, Mario Biaggi. Mario Biaggi, when he retired from the police department, was the most decorated police officer in history. Mario Biaggi had been shot more times. He had more holes in him than a Swiss cheese. And Mario Biaggi ran as a Democrat for Congress in the Bronx. And lo and behold, not only was he repeatedly uh, put up for re-election by the Democrats, but the Republicans and the conservatives and the liberals would all endorse Mario Biaggi. Uh, and Mario had a, had a run for mayor that failed, but uh, eventually he was a criminal defendant in a RICO case. He and legendary Democrat political boss Mead Esposito, a powerful man in the city of New York, a powerful man in New York state politics, a Democrat. Mead Esposito and Mario Biaggi were indicted in a RICO case, right? And, and that all had to do with Mead Esposito arranged for Mario Biaggi to get a vacation for free, okay? It may, it's not right, okay? Probably against the law, but what's the big deal? Well, their lives were ruined. Both Mead Esposito, Mario Biaggi, lost their political positions and went to jail. And um, that's what the RICO law turned out to be. So it's not just against organized crime. It's against even the people who helped to create it, all right? There have been thousands of cases, RICO cases, conspiracy cases, against non-organized crime entities. Two of the most famous are the Enron case. The Enron case. Enron was an energy and utility company in Houston, Texas. And they were represented by the biggest accounting firm in the United States, the Arthur Anderson firm. Arthur Anderson and Enron were both targeted. They were targeted by our government. They were targeted by the same prosecutor who convicted Vincent the Chin Gigante. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? The same prosecutor who prosecuted Vincent Gigante and prosecuted the Arthur Anderson Accounting Company also ran the Mueller investigation investigating Donald Trump. Now, be sure, I'm not trying to target any particular prosecutor. The prosecutors aren't bad. The laws that allow them to break people and to break companies are bad. The law allows them to do it. So we can't blame the prosecutors. We've got to blame ourselves for allowing these laws to continue to exist. Three years after the Arthur Anderson Accounting Company was destroyed by, by 
a criminal case, the Supreme Court of the United States unanimously overturned their conviction. A little too late. The law firm was ruined, and so was everyone in it. Now, let's get to Donald Trump. The Donald. The Don for today. Hmm. Whether you love him or whether you hate him, whether you think he is a hero or whether you think he is a buffoon, he has a right to run for president. And his fate as such should not be left to anyone but the voters. But because law enforcement was able to get away with targeting people, they call organized criminals were not the only ones who were targeted. Just as I have warned for decades, now they do it to anyone, including the former president of the United States, like him or not. The weaponizing of the criminal justice system against any person or any group is just plain wrong. That's the purpose of this podcast. In a massive attack on all fronts, law enforcement is targeting the Don. He is being treated exactly as if he were believed to be a mafia chieftain. In Georgia, the anti-Trump Republicans, right? They are trying to bring charges of election interference against Trump. Did Trump do anything that other politicians haven't done in the past? Could Trump be guilty? Of course. The point is, they are going after him for political revenge. He wouldn't be a target of any criminal investigation if there weren't a political war brewing in Georgia in the Republican Party. The Attorney General of New York, Letitia James, who, by the way, bit the hand that fed her by driving Governor Andrew Cuomo, a fellow Democrat, whose job she wanted, she made considerable efforts to go after Trump as if he were a gangster target. She destroyed the Trump Foundation, a charitable organization, and went after his kids unsuccessfully. Just like in organized crime cases. She couldn't get any criminal charges to stick against Trump or Andrew Cuomo, her political opponents. But she did her best to ruin them, you know, kind of run them off the political scene. Biden's boys and the federal government have been trying and failing to get Trump out of the picture like a mob war. This is like a mob war, okay? While Trump may have incited a lot of idiots who stormed the Capitol on January 6th, there is no way in the world to legitimately convict him of insurrection. The attempted prosecution of Trump for keeping confidential government documents in his home is backfiring because Biden and many others have done the same thing. They crashed Donald Trump's house in Mar-a-Lago like they never have crashed the house of John Gotti. They wanted to make an example of him. They wanted to treat him like a hoodlum, they wanted to create an image that this man is a gangster. They've succeeded in the past to ruin people in organized crime cases, and now they're doing the same in political cases. Ask Roger Stone. As for the Stormy Daniels situation, which occurred in 2006, the so-called payoff occurred in 2016. It is now 2023. What happened to the statute 
of limitations. Normally, in any criminal case in New York, that's five years at the most. By the way, what is the crime here? We're talking about the Stormy Daniels payoff case. All right, we know that it might be immoral to do what Trump is accused of doing. But when you try to find a crime, that's a little bit more difficult. The Federal Election Commission and the Department of Justice looked at this situation and decided not to prosecute. The Manhattan DA's office, under Cyrus Vance Jr. and Alvin Bragg, searched for a way to get the Donald. What they came up with was a prosecution of the Trump Organization, which resulted in a fine for the Trump Organization. They arrested a gentleman, an old gentleman, by the name of Alan Weisselberg, Trump's father's bookkeeper, a man who was with Trump's father from the beginning, and Donald took him into his organization and made him the chief financial officer for year after year after year. Alan was part of Trump's family. They arrested Alan Weisselberg for basically giving himself and his kids perks paid for by the Trump Organization that no one else ever is prosecuted for anywhere. A lot of this stuff goes on day after day. But if you're arrested, every businessman who did what Trump's financial officer did, you, you'd, you'd fill up Yankee Stadium and City Field, Okay. This is something that may be wrong, technically, but no one is ever prosecuted for. But there was a selective prosecution here. They sent this old man to jail. And they sent him in j to jail for one reason. Because he wouldn't rat on Donald Trump. Sound familiar? Well, that's what every organized crime case is all about. It's about getting someone, squeezing someone, getting them to testify against the target. And I've been squawking about this for year after year, for decades, and no one really cares. But they better understand they should be caring about what goes on in the court system. As for the Stormy Daniels situation itself, the Federal Election Commission, the Department of Justice, the New York Attorney General's Office, and the Manhattan DA Cyrus Vance all looked at this case and chose not to prosecute. While Vance was still the District Attorney of Manhattan, he hired two outside prosecutors, Carrie Dunn and Mark Pomerantz to investigate the Trump case. Pomerantz and Dunn resigned last year when it looked like Alvin Bragg was not going to pursue the case. When it seemed like the Trump case was about to be dropped by D.A. Alvin Bragg, the two special prosecutors outside prosecutors, called in just to prosecute Trump. They resigned, and in an extraordinary, unusual move, one of the prosecutors, Mr. Pomerantz, wrote a book about an ongoing case that was still in the grand jury and criticized D.A. Alvin Bragg for not going forward on the Trump case. Well, it seems that Mr. Bragg had a lot of political pressure on him to get Trump. Bragg must have gotten a lot of heat from the left wing of his party and his donors, at least to the extent that District Attorney Bragg had to put this case in the grand jury. In my opinion, 
I think he just put the case in the grand jury and put his hands up and said, let it be on them. So what's the point? All this stuff has been going on in organized crime cases for my almost five decades as a lawyer. I have been warning people for decades that the criminal justice system should not be prostituted or compromised. I'm not defending Donald Trump, but simply saying, I told you so. When you allow the government to railroad who they call gangsters, you are going to be next. And even a former president of the United States with millions of dollars at his disposal can be targeted. And that's the view from Mulberry Street. Until next time, this is Matthew J. Mary. Thank you.